So our vision for this property and for these, these buildings was to bring our families together. So my, my parents um, purchased this land years and years ago. As we all got to a point where we wanted to build our own homes, we decided to do it together as a group and take some of the complexities of planning time together out of our, our lives. It was less about a big house and more about a, a small house that kind of became big through its connection to the outdoors. It's a three bedroom, two and a half bath house. It's a lot to pack into a, a 1,400 square foot house and still have pleasing volumetric experiences, you know, big volumes. And we talk in terms of square footage, but really cubic footage would be a more accurate indicator of how we experience architecture. And cubic footage is really what we experience when we look out of window walls. This house is fairly compact horizontally, but it's, it's voluminous vertically. The technique for that was to create a simple footprint for the ground floor, similar footprint for the second floor, but cut big openings. And those big openings enable the user to see all of these double height spaces and to experience large volumes from several rooms. We opened ourselves up to doing something that might not work for the market or work for anybody else. And one of those areas was to separate the bedroom as a separate wing. You know, one of us can stay up and work late or get up very early and make loads of noise. For us, it's perfect. This project has everything from monumental windows to standard casements and awnings to asymmetrical radius curved top windows at the largest size Marvin can produce. We were trying to do a, a handful of kind of interesting things with the glass, and I was trying to push the, the limitations of the materials of, of what Marvin could and, and, and would manufacture. We have a, a curved roof that's a, a tilted curve, so it's not just a, a barrel vault where you can easily predict that each side of the window is gonna be the same, but actually it's tilted such that each curved window has a high side and a low side. We chose to have the windows disappear into the roof, into the ceiling material, for a number of reasons. Mainly, we wanted there to be a visual seamlessness between inside and out. And the way we achieved this is we, we took the standard Marvin window with no modification whatsoever, and we just lifted it into a framing cavity that was part of our structure. And then we could bring all of our interior finishes and our exterior finishes right to the glass. We furthered that by actually having a, a wood system on the ceiling that, where the boards go the direction of the view so that it further carries your eye out the window. And we tried to match boards up inside and out so it was actually the same board going through. So really you have to consciously stop and think about where the window line is rather than it being obvious and, and interruptive of your view. It's a valid approach to do something really distinct that stands apart from a landscape. It was not our approach here. The other approach I think is equally valid and more often my preference is to integrate with it, especially in a natural setting like this where we had virgin land. This has never been touched by anybody and so there's a profound responsibility there to not, not mess it up. We live in a, in a retreat setting in beautiful Mediterranean climate. We live in wine country and we live amidst just a beautiful piece of property with great views. If we can build buildings and build homes relating to one another in such a way where, we, where we, we feel like we've just arrived at a place we would have gone on vacation, what could be better than that? <laughs>